Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you're enjoying your Halloween. Today I have another magic review for you guys. We're taking a look at the POV Peak Device by Joa Miranda and Julio Montoro. And you can pick this up for $50 from your favorite magic dealer. You're going to get the gimmick as well as some extras, some refills in here. You're also going to get access to video instruction where you're going to learn six handlings of the Peak as well as four routines and then there's a video that also shows you how to clean the gimmick and take care of it. That's what you can expect here. As usual, I'm going to give you guys my impressions from road testing this for the past two weeks. I'm also going to try to answer those questions you guys have. I'm going to share with you a live performance of my own so you can see the reactions that I've gotten from this, give you a rundown of what you can expect to learn on here and then um, give you my rating and some final thoughts. So if you haven't figured out already, this is a Peak device that looks like a little post-it pad where you can have a spectator write down a thought and you will instantaneously be able to peak the information. That's what this is. What are my impressions of this? So after two weeks of road testing this, I'm really pleased with it. I really enjoyed it and I think it was well worth the purchase. I wouldn't hesitate to place this in the top three peak devices that I purchased this year. And it's for this following reasons. One, it was extremely portable. I carried it with me every day. Didn't even notice I was carrying it with me. In fact, I would carry it in a little plastic bag to keep it clean. Um, it was a very organic prop. Nobody questioned it. And it allowed me to do like a very quick off the cuff effect at any time I wanted to with my patients or even with coworkers. And so it really flew well. I mean, I really got extremely strong reactions from it. And I found that it was very well motivated in terms of what your spectator does. And because you get a number of different handlings of the peak, I experimented with those to see which ones I felt work the best for me. And you're going to experiment with that yourself. So I found two main limitations for this um, in my own experimenting with it. So it wasn't all positive. Um, one of the limitations I found was that you're very limited in what they can write because first of all, it's a very small area. And second of all, it worked really well with numbers, but once you started to veer away from numbers, it got a little more difficult. So I did okay with drawings, but it wasn't the easiest with drawings. I'll tell you guys that up front, and you cannot use this with words at all. Um, especially if you're trying to go for a really quick peek, then I would suggest you just stick to numbers. Because if you're going to use a simple drawing, you're going to have to use a routine where the peak you have more time for it because sometimes it can be difficult. And that's because the spectator that you're performing for may just be very bad at doing any kind of drawing. And they may draw something that just you can't even figure out what it is. And so you need more than a split second to look at it. So that was the limitation I had in terms of what they drew. The other limitation I had was in the reset. I found that this takes a couple of seconds to reset. And the problem I had was that when I performed for three or four people at the same time, it was a, I got amazing reactions, but they wanted to see it again. Another person wanted me to do it with them. And you have to reset. You can't reset right in front of them. And because of that, I had to go into some other effect. I was like, oh, right, let's try this. And we just quickly went into a different direction. But that was the real limitations that I found of it. Other than that, I really got really strong reactions. And like I mentioned, I really liked it a lot. So let's get into those questions that you guys have about this. And then I'm going to share with you my live performance that I recorded of this. So uh, here's the question you probably have about this. As the ad copy says, it says that there's no electronics and no impressions. And that is true. There's none of that. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, how difficult is this to perform? I would suggest that it's extremely simple to perform. It's very, very easy. I'd say it's beginner level. And because you get multiple handlings, some are a little more difficult than others, but the main handling that you'll probably use from the trailer that you saw is like beginner level and it's really easy. I think that the real, uh, the part of it that's a little more difficult is not the handling of it. It's more getting the glimpse. Um, and some people even said like, is there any problems with lighting conditions? Like I've seen some people suggesting like, is there a lighting issue? The truth of the matter is I had no problem at all with lighting and I only perform this indoors in a hospital setting. Imagine overnight in some areas that are very dark and I had no problems at all. So I didn't have any issues with the lighting at all, but I think in terms of difficulty, 
The real difficulty you may have that you may want to practice before you actually go out and use this is just practicing getting the glimpse. And the reason is because you want to get your peak in a way that it doesn't look obvious. And that's really the strength of this is that if you can get the peak instantaneously without staring at it, then this will be a lot more convincing. But the actual handling of doing it, everything is well motivated, so nobody's gonna question it. And so you're not gonna have any issues at all. I thought it was actually really beginner level in that way. Um, and next question you guys probably have is, how, well, in general, how long does it take to get the peak? I mean, it takes me like just half a second to get it, especially if you're using numbers. If you're using an image like a drawing, you may want it, you may have to take a look at it for more than half a second, as I had mentioned earlier. Next question you may have is, can I use any writing instruments? And the truth of the matter is you're going to have to use a marker like a Sharpie of some sort. The writing instrument that I used most commonly was just a staples marker, and this is called a Duramark. This is what I used more frequently than anything else, and it's because it looks like a, it just looks like a little marker or like a little pen. Um, and so I just carried this around and I used this and I didn't have any issues with it at all. But you cannot use a pencil or a pen. You are going to have to use a marker to, with this device. Um, can the spectator handle it? Well, yeah, the spectator can handle it, but they really can't inspect it, but they're not going to want to anyway. Um, I'm, you're not gonna have any issues with that at all. And I did see that like on the Magic Cafe that some people were posting on there that the spectator was like noticing that it was a gimmick. And if that's the case, then your handling of this is wrong. Um, because they really shouldn't get any wind of that whatsoever. I didn't have any issues with that in my own performances, and I did uh, versions where only I would be holding it or I would give it to them and have them write something down on it. I didn't have any issues at all with that, so I'm kind of surprised to hear people saying that. Um, how quickly can this be repeated? As I mentioned earlier, it only take a few seconds to repeat this. How fragile is the gimmick? So I think it's made really well. It's I think it's made well, but because it, there is a part of this, this is that is paper. You are going to have to be careful because obviously this is going to break down. It's not going to last forever, and that's why I've been carrying mine in a plastic bag. You may want to do that too, just to keep it, especially to keep it clean more than anything else. But I think that it's made well. I think it's going to last quite a while. Uh, next question you may have is how are the angles on this? So the main issue with the angles is you can't have anybody directly behind you. And I found that if I performed for like two or three people, I had no problems. But if I had to perform for more than three people, that's where I had a problem. Um, and so this works excellent one on one. You're not going to have any issues at all. But like I mentioned, if you start to have you're performing for a lot of people, then you're going to have to limit the handling that you use because if not, people may see what's going on. So that's the only issue with the angles. Um, next question, do you need any refills for this? You really don't. Um, it comes with a bunch of little post-its um, refills that you can use in terms of the papers that you're gonna use. Um, it's funny, but I haven't even gone through half of the ones that they've given me already, and I've been using it for two weeks. Um, but the fact of the matter is that um, you can easily buy those yourself, so you don't really need to have any refills. That There's no issue with that at all. And finally, the last question you may have is that you may have heard that the actual gimmick may look a little bit discolored when you get it. And the, and the reason is because there is an area on the front that may look a little bit darker or gray. And so I found out that this actually is pretty standard with all of them. But even though you notice it, your spectators will never notice it. And the reason is because they're not going to inspect this. They're literally going to write their thought. They're going to take the post-it note and that's it. The actual pad's going to go in your pocket. So you're not going to just leave it with them to sit there and look at it and stare at it and inspect it. So that is a question that I saw on the Magic Cafe and I did confirm that that's pretty much universal with these because of the way that it's made, but it doesn't matter anyway. And I'm the first person to tell you guys because I road tested it, it doesn't matter. No one is gonna notice anything even though to you it may be noticeable. So those are some questions that you guys may have. Let's take a look at my live performance of this and you're gonna see how I tweak this because I wanted to be able to reveal more than just a number. You're gonna see how I'm revealing multiple pieces of information in my own performance and then we're going to get into the contents of what you can expect to learn on this project. So let's take a look at that now. 
got my actually they got post-its here i carry around like a little post-it mm -hmm. pad myself right mm -hmm. imagine if we did like a little mind reading okay. right think of a two-digit number one that i possibly wouldn't know right okay. here we go i got a pen here we're gonna use this write your two-digit number there okay okay mm -hmm. and then concentrate on it mm -hmm. okay did you take it take it off so that way Yep, take okay. it off. All right. Keep it so I can't see it. Okay. Now, there's two digits. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on them. Mm -hmm. Now, think of any one of those digits and think about how you would spell it. You got that in your mind? Yep. Think of the last letter mm -hmm. of that digit and imagine a precious stone that starts with that letter. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of Okay, I've got one. You got one? Mm-hmm. All right. Think of the color of that stone. Okay. And imagine the, the, the number inside of that color. Imagine sending that to me mentally. I'm sensing it's like a, like almost like a very strong greenish color. Am I right? <laughs> All right. You're thinking of an emerald? Mm -hmm. Am I? And is it, you're thinking of, is it 55? <laughs> There you go. See, col <laughs> color helps you to transmit it. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, so you guys listen to my live performance, and you could see the reactions that I got from this, and you could see that after performing this several times, I realized that it's actually better to try to come up with a structure of a routine where you're revealing multiple pieces of information, not just the thought that they're coming up with. And you really are only limited by your imagination, even though you are going to get some other um, routines on here that we're going to go over in a moment. I mean, even in my own thoughts, in my own road testing of this, I even see that people in the Magic Cafe are even talking about how you can use this with like a magic square revelation and i did road test this as well um, with using the digital force bag which it worked really well with the digital force bag because the number you know you're not even you don't even know what it is you could even utilize this if you wanted to with like an any card in any number where you have no idea what the number is that they're thinking of so again you are only limited by your imagination which is what makes this little device so devious so let's get into what you can expect to learn here on the video instruction and then we're going to get into my rating so as i mentioned earlier you're going to learn six handlings of the peak and those handlings are going to vary from the pad being in your hand to the pad being in their hand so you, there's a lot of versatility in terms of how you get your peak which is nice and you're going to have to experiment with those to see which one that you like more than others personally i like the version best where you're holding on to the pad they simply just write something down and then they immediately take the, the, the post-it note off of the pad and they hide it and you put the pad in your pocket. It just felt like the most organic handling, um, which was well motivated. And it just seems like there's absolutely no way that you could get your peak at all. It's just, it's like, there's no way you can know what they wrote. And I absolutely fooled everyone that I performed this for over the past two weeks. And that was the primary handling that I used. Even though I experimented with the other handlings, I just found that that was the quickest, the most organic, and it just worked really well. Now, in terms of the routines that you're going to learn on here, the first routine is called direct thought. And as you can imagine, it's a very simple revelation of a number that somebody thinks of and they write down on the pad, and then you immediately read their mind and tell them what it is. And it's probably the routine you're going to use the most. Definitely was the one that I used the most, even though I fine-tuned it and I altered it, as you can see from my own performance. And as I mentioned, I started to even use this with the digital force bag to do a further revelation as well, which is really kind of nice um, because then you're able to reveal, again, you're using this as a stepping stone for a multiple revelation sequence, which is what makes this really strong. The next routine was called mirror routine. And this routine is one where you're using two post-it pads and basically you have the spectator make a drawing, you make a drawing, and then you show each other each other's drawings and they match. That's really what it is. And I did like this routine a lot. I thought it was very clever. And when I road tested it, I actually found that it's better to do a preliminary sequence first where you're actually going to, what I did was this, was that I had one pad, they had one pad, 
and I would actually have them, th I told them I'm gonna think of a number, I'm gonna write it down, and then I would have them think of a number and write it down. I would tell them I want them to try to read my mind, and basically this is like a psychological force that you guys all know really well. I'm just gonna say out loud here, the 37 force, right? And then it didn't really matter if they hit it or not, but the reason why I used it was because it gave me a motivation to you know, turn the pad back, you know, show them the pad multiple times. And then there's a reason why you're exchanging pads with them because in the routine, you're going to exchange pads with them and you need to have a motivation for doing that. I found that there wasn't any good motivation for doing it in the original routine. So if you do experiment with this routine, you may want to try my idea, which is to do a preliminary round where you, you know, you do any kind of psychological force you want on the spectator. And that way there's a motivation for why you're taking the pad from their hand and you're giving them yours so you can see what they wrote. And then you can go into the second phase, which is going to hit them like a ton of bricks when you have them just make any drawing that they want and you make a drawing and you're going to try to read their mind or you're each reading each other's minds at the same time. So I found that that worked really well for me. And that's the second routine that you're going to learn on here. The third routine was the drawing duplication uh, routine, which is a routine where um, your spectator makes a drawing and then you do a drawing duplication, but it's a failure. And then you ball it up into a little ball and put it in a wine glass and spin it around and then it transforms into their drawing. Um, you could use that if you wanted to. Um, you can also take it in a different direction if you wanted to, where you can have a post-it note in the wine glass balled up before you even begin, almost as a prediction. And then you can make it seem like you're doing a drawing duplication and your drawing duplication failed. And you could say, oh no, it failed. And then you could easily be able to show them that the one that's in the wine glass that was there before you even started matches the one that they drew in real time. So you can actually turn this into like a prediction effect if you want to, very simple, very small amount of thought process for you to figure out how to do that, as you can see. And then finally, uh, the last routine that's on there is the card trick kicker. Um, this I thought was the weakest routine on there because you have a spectator think of a number from one to six, they write it down on the pad, and then you have them pick out six cards. Um, you have them think of the card that's at their position, and then um, they're placed back in the deck face up. Um, and then what happens is that uh, all the cards write themselves. The only card that's face up is the one that they thought of. And then as a kicker, you can show them that on the back of the card is a post-it pad with the number that they selected. So personally, I didn't really like this routine because I didn't think that there was any motivation really to have the post-it pad in use. I don't know, you might like it, but there's multiple princess card trick effects that are very similar to this that you can do that you don't even need to have a post-it pad. So, I mean, I wouldn't use this, but then again, you might like it yourself. So that's what you can expect in terms of the routines that you're gonna learn on here. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, there is a video about how to take care of the pad and how to clean it. So they tell you exactly what kind of substance you can use to clean it in case you get any kind of marking on the actual pad itself. So how does the POV Peak device compare with other products out there? I'm just gonna mention two for comparison. Labco Magic did put out a posted version of their Mind Buster impression device. This is an electronic device. Um, if you know what the Mind Buster is, then you probably have a good idea of what this is. I don't know if they still sell it or not, and I never owned the posted version, so I really can't comment on it but I just mentioned it for completeness sake. And Seamus McGuire did put out um, a peak routine that used a post-it pad that was called Take Note. Now, in my own experiences with that effect, I didn't really like it at all. If you're not familiar with it, it uses the block post-it where you have a spectator write down a thought and then they hand it back to you face down and you hold it in your hand and then afterward you ask them a couple of questions and then you give it back to them and then you reveal their thoughts. The problem that I had with that effect was that I never got a really good peak. Um, it didn't work very well for me and I found often that I was struggling just to try to figure out what they wrote and so for that reason I didn't like it at all. I wouldn't recommend it to you guys. I don't think it's good. And so that's why I'm telling you guys to just stay away from it. 
and that's why you guys watch these reviews because I tell you straight up what the truth is. And so for that reason, I don't think any of these products really are as versatile as this little peak device that I'm going over today. So let's take a look at my rating. So you guys can see here, here's my rating and you can see that I give this a score of 4.17 out of five, which is highly favorable. Obviously the main idea behind this device is not original to them, um, but it is very creative how they have employed it with a post-it pad. And I thought that the instruction was really clear and very good. And they give you lots of different ideas to start from because really this is a very versatile little device that's gonna enable you to fine tune your performances, your routines. You know, you can tailor them however you want to suit you. And so I think that this is definitely something that you're gonna like a lot. Anyway, just to sum up for you guys, I would definitely recommend that you take a look at this if you're into mentalism. Um, because I think this is something you're going to find. It's going to become part of your everyday carry. The real negative about the uh, POV pad that I could see that my own thoughts in terms of what are like the real negatives of this is that it's not going to last forever, that it's going to break down because part of it's made out of paper. And because of that, I think that over using it ex extensively, it's going to just eventually fall apart and you're gonna have to buy a new one. But that being said, I think you're gonna get lots of performances out of it before that eventually happens. And the trade-off is that you have something that's completely organic, well-motivated, very easy to use, and something that you can tailor to your own mentalism that you perform um, your own style where you're going to really be able to get a lot out of it. It's an excellent just tool uh, for your toolbox and something that looks very plausible in the real world. So I think that the real concerns that I've seen that people have given are very weak. And from my own road testing this for the past two weeks, I've had no problems whatsoever. Even that simple idea that people say about like, well, how do you justify to write down your thought? You don't, you just have them do it. Nobody questions it. I don't know, the, the human psychology of it is once they take the post-it note off of the pad and they put it in their pocket, they just forget they ever wrote it, especially because you don't dwell on it. So um, anyway, again, like I said to you guys, I would highly recommend this to you guys and I wouldn't hesitate to put this in the top three peak devices that I've purchased this past year. Anyway, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them for me below. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning into my magic reviews. Have a good Halloween, and I'll see you on the next one.